Hello, and welcome to this presentation on Oracle Advanced Security in Oracle Database 12C. My name is Todd Botker, and I'm the Product Manager for Oracle Advanced Security. This is the third in a series of short video recordings for anyone who is looking to learn more about Oracle Advanced Security and quickly get up to speed on what's new in the current release. It is often said that one picture is worth a thousand words, so let's pick right up where the previous presentation left off and show another product demonstration. Here is a brief summary of the topics we will cover. You will see how Transparent Data Encryption, or TDE, works, hear about its benefits, observe how encryption keys are managed, and learn about new key management functionality in Oracle Database 12C. We will start off with a brief introduction and then walk through an end-to-end -end product demonstration that will show you TDE in action. Although the demo focuses on table space encryption specifically, it's important to note that TDE supports table space encryption and column encryption, and both approaches are commonly used. For existing TDE customers planning their 12C upgrade, towards the end of this presentation I will describe backward compatibility features that will help make your upgrade a smooth experience. Key management is a critical part of any data encryption solution, so let's take a moment to describe and summarize how TDE key management works. TDE has a two-tier key architecture with data encryption keys that are managed automatically behind the scenes and a master key that encrypts the data encryption keys. This master key is generated by the database and directly managed by a human user. For the database to work with TDE encrypted data, it must have access to the master key. Most TDE customers store the master key using the included Oracle Wallet Key Management Solution. Each TDE wallet maps to one and only one running Oracle database. The wallet must be opened with a password entry to make the master key available to the database. As the master key is rotated over time, the historical keys remain in the wallet in case they are needed later on to restore TDE encrypted database backups. Rotating the master key does not require re-encrypting any of your existing encrypted data. Note that the Oracle Wallet secures the master encryption keys in various ways. Because the Oracle Wallet resides outside of the database, it creates a clear separation between encrypted data and corresponding encryption keys. The wallet itself is a PKCS12 compliant key management file which is encrypted using a password derived key according to the PKCS5 standard. In addition, wallet files can be locked down further by setting operating system and file system permissions and by setting the immutable bit. Wallets even can be stored on a secure network share that you set up where each wallet resides in a per database subdirectory within the share. As a security best practice, wallets should be backed up regularly and kept separate from backups of the encrypted data. In addition to their security benefits, wallets can be easily copied to support encrypted data movement, database replication, and database backup and restore. The wallet basically acts as a persistent local key cache which is useful because when encrypted data moves, the key needs to be available on both the origin and the destination. Wallets often are used for database cluster configurations on Oracle Rack, DataGuard, and GoldenGate. Oracle also provides an additional special purpose type of wallet that can be opened without human password entry to support automatic database restart scenarios. Okay. Now with that general background, let's change gears and go right into the product demo. We'll be using Oracle Enterprise Manager, or EM, to do most of the demonstration steps so that you can see them in the context of Oracle's browser-based management console. Before we create the wallet key store or generate any TDE keys, the first thing we need to do is identify a database user account to be the key manager. This approach establishes a separation of duties, delegating key management to someone who is separate from the DBA and who holds the privileges necessary to manage TDE master keys. After logging into the database as SysDBA, here on the database users screen, I see an account named InfoSec Isabel that looks like a good fit. 
We'll make InfoSec Isabel the key manager by granting her an administrative privilege that is new in Oracle Database 12C. This administrative privilege is named SysKM and it provides the user with the necessary key management capabilities. After I log out as SysDBA, we will be logging back into the database as SysKM going forward. Next, we will use the TDE home screen to set up a wallet key store. I select TDE from the security dropdown, at which point I am prompted to log into the database target as SysKM. After I log in, Notice that EM detects TDE has not yet been configured on this database, and it displays a button in the top left panel that takes me to a configuration wizard. This wizard will create a wallet key store and an initial TDE master key. The first wizard step confirms the TNS admin path pointing to the TDE configuration file named SQLNet.ora and gathers a user credential for the database host machine. This credential is needed by the wizard in case we choose to write changes back to the SQLNet.ora configuration file, such as modifying the TDE wallet file location. The second wizard step actually reads the current settings from SQLNet.ora. For demonstration purposes, I have pre-configured SQLNet.ora to point to the correct directory location where I want to store the wallet file, so we'll simply accept these settings and click Next to proceed. The third wizard step lets us set the wallet password and a tag attribute for the initial TDE master key that will be created. The tag attribute is a new feature in Oracle Database 12C that allows you to give a descriptive name to the TDE master key according to your own naming conventions. We are tagging this key as Q1 key to indicate that it will be in use during the first quarter of the calendar year. Tag is not the only new key attribute available in Oracle Database 12C, there are many others. For example, there are new attributes to help you track keys across their life cycle, see when keys were last backed up, and manage keys for Oracle multi-tenant pluggable databases. Notice that in addition to creating the standard password-based wallet, we also can generate an optional auto-login wallet to support automatic database restart. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll create a standard password-based wallet only. In a moment, we will finish the wizard, which will execute a series of SQL commands, but before doing that, let's quickly review what is about to happen. We will be executing key and key store management commands that are brand new in Oracle Database 12C. The new commands serve as a one-stop shop for all key management operations, consolidating what used to require interaction with multiple Oracle commands and utilities. You can use these new commands to create a key store, open and close a key store, create, activate, and rotate keys, export and import keys, change the key store password, and much more. All of these commands are prefixed with the same syntax, administer key management. Sometimes I refer to this as an abbreviation, AKM. Here you can see the AKM commands to create the wallet key store, open the wallet, and create an initial TDE master key inside of the wallet. Also notice the suffix with backup, which is another new feature in Oracle Database 12C. This automatically creates a local backup of the wallet within the same directory to help protect against unlikely events such as accidentally deleting the wallet or forgetting the wallet password. Prior to Oracle Database 12C, we recommended as a best practice to back up the wallet whenever making a key or password change. As of 12C, this practice is enforced explicitly and automated for convenience. You must use with backup syntax whenever making a key or password change. You optionally can set a name for the wallet backup file or simply use the default timestamp based name. 
OK, everything looks good here, so let's go ahead and click Finish to complete the initial TDE configuration. Notice that now the top left panel shows frequently used operations instead of the TDE configuration wizard button. From here, you can perform common operations like opening and closing the key store and rotating the TDE master key. Below you see a panel that gives you quick access to all operations related to the key store along with a view of the current key store status. We see here that the key store is open and the underlying wallet file is stored under the ETC directory. On the right, you can see the list of currently loaded keys. Notice that the Q1 key we created as part of the wizard is shown in the list and marked as in use, meaning that it is the active TDE master key at present. You can see other helpful key lifecycle metadata in the list, and buttons above the list allow you to activate a different key or create a new one. At the bottom of the screen, you can see a list of TDE encrypted table spaces and tables containing TDE encrypted columns. We have not encrypted any data yet, but with a new TDE master key now available, we can go ahead and create an encrypted table space to house our sensitive data. Before creating an encrypted table space, we need to log out of this database as SysKM. Next, we navigate to the Table Spaces screen and log into the database as an Applications DBA who is responsible for managing application database schemas. After logging in, I click on the Create button to add a new table space. Let's call this new table space CRM Inc. This is because in an upcoming step, we will move a clear table that contains sensitive customer cardholder information managed by our CRM application into the encrypted table space. Below, we need to add a data file for the new table space, so I click on the Add button. Let's call the file CRM Inc and append the .dbf file extension. Now, to make it an encrypted table space, we simply check the encryption checkbox. If you want to change the encryption algorithm and key length used, click on the Encryption Options button. For this demo, let's use AES-256 as the encryption algorithm for the table space. Finally, I click on the OK button and wait for a few seconds while the new TDE encrypted table space is created. When the creation process is finished, we see the new table space show up in the table spaces list. In the next step, I will move the CRM table containing sensitive customer cardholder information into the new encrypted table space. The table that we must move is called CCA underscore card info and it resides in the CRM application schema. The act of moving it to a new table space causes all of the existing table data to be encrypted at once. In live customer deployments, waiting to encrypt all of the existing data at once may or may not be desirable depending on your environment and requirements. Let me point out here that the Oracle database provides many helpful tools and approaches to assist with moving table data. Both online and offline data movement are supported. For example, you may have heard of Oracle Online Table Redefinition, Oracle Data Pump, Alter Table Move, and Create Table as Select. For the purposes of this quick demonstration, I will use EM's Reorganize Objects wizard to move CCA card info. Here at the beginning of the wizard, I search for the CCA card info table and index. After these two database objects are located, I set attributes to move them into the CRM Inc. table space.
Then, in the next few steps, I'll simply accept the defaults presented by the wizard. At the very end of the wizard, notice the two SQL commands that have been generated. One is alter table move to move the table over into the encrypted table space and the other is alter index rebuild to move the index. After I submit this job, you'll see that it soon finishes and then I can go ahead and verify that the job has succeeded. That's it. Now we are all done. Note that in real production systems, after you have moved all of your sensitive data out of clear table spaces and into encrypted table spaces, you can drop the clear table spaces and securely delete the underlying files. Or, if you need to maintain non-sensitive data in clear table spaces going forward, then you can leave these clear table spaces alone, and the database eventually will overwrite the free data blocks in the course of its normal operations. This is the last step of the interactive TDE demonstration. Here is a quick review of the demo steps we just completed. First, we identified a key management database user and granted this user SysKM. Then, working as the key management user, we created an Oracle Wallet key store and an initial TDE master key. Lastly, we logged into the database as an applications DBA, created a new TDE encrypted table space, and moved existing data into this table space to encrypt the sensitive information. The new TDE key management functionality in Oracle Database 12C is very powerful. But if you're an existing TDE user running a previous version of the Oracle database, you may be wondering about backward compatibility. This slide shows a couple of important backward compatibility points. The new key management AKM commands that we showed in the demo work on wallet key stores that were created by older versions of the Oracle database. Note that when using a legacy wallet with a 12C database instance, the new 12C key attributes are not present. Also, the legacy key management commands that you may have used in Oracle Database 11G Release 2 and prior still are supported. You can continue to use the alter system wallet and key operations if desired, and you can continue using existing utilities like Aura PKI. That said, we do recommend that you transition to the new key management commands soon in order to take full advantage of the 12C functionality. That concludes this Oracle Advanced Security product demonstration. As a next step, if you have not already viewed the previous videos in this series, then please take a look at them to learn more about other capabilities of Oracle Advanced Security. Thank you.